Yeah, so the, the first thing is I actually order online sachets of, of a yogurt that I make religiously and it lasts for about three or four weeks in the fridge. So it's not, it's not a lot of work. It takes me five minutes. And I'm going to, I have a newsletter on my website that I'm going to put out the recipe. But it's wonderful. And I haven't been sick since I started two years ago taking this stuff. Got it. <laughs> a blend of about 15 different bacteria that are normally in the human gut in s small amounts. And the doctor that makes this says that they're highly anti-inflammatory. And I was skeptical. And I, I bought this stuff for my son, who I thought maybe we could reduce his obesity mm -hmm. issue. Uh, and we, all, we both started taking, eating it and found we were transformed in terms of our health wow. including not getting sick anymore so it's it's you know not a clinical trial again but i used to get sick every few weeks because i fly a lot sure we'll talk browser uh bravo yogurt bravo yogurt. bravo yogurt and uh, i'll put out the full recipe but essentially you don't need to follow their recipe there's a quick and easy way to do it um, they suggest boiling the milk and sterilizing everything and then lowering temperature, blah, blah, blah. So I'm a microbiologist. I figured out a way to do this without apparently any risk. <laughs> a bit of hot, clean water, rinse out a, a big mason jar, about you know a bit bigger than the ones we've got here on this table. Uh, mix that with whole milk. Um, you know, if you're lactose intolerant, then I guess you could try uh, your own brand. But whole milk, uh, grass-fed pour it in, mix it up, shake it, put it in the oven on defrost at uh, 95 degrees overnight, and then you've got two weeks worth of yogurt. Wow. And uh, it, it, it tastes like the best yogurt I can buy, or better, actually. There's, there's no sugar in it, of course. And uh, so it's, yeah, I don't like the taste of really sweet anything anymore after my diet. Anyway, so that's my first one. Let's go to the farmer's market. <laughs> I'll, I'll give everyone the full recipe later. But the um, first thing I would go for would be uh, so a dark green leafy vegetable. Uh, so that would be, unfortunately, kale. I say unfortunately because a lot of people don't like kale. Just for do that. Yeah, kale or, or anything. I think baby um, broccoli is good. All that uh, good leafy stuff. I also would do bro Brussels sprouts. Um, I would avoid grapes, actually. Uh, grapes, uh, so Rhonda Patrick and I agree that grapes are overrated. <laughs> uh, there's huge amounts of sugar, and mm -hmm. you, you eat one, and you can see, actually, if you monitor your blood like we do, sends it through the roof. So that's just one thing I'd walk past. And then the next aisle, so we've got two, three items already, I think. Um, if you include the yogurt, then then I would go and I'd get, I get fruit. Um, I, I'm not averse to fruit. It's a nice snack in between if I need it. So I'm pretty good on, on apples, but I don't go for a really sugar laden fruit. You know, I don't like want banana. it really sweet. Um, banana, I think things like um, oranges uh, right. stink. You know, they, they're fine with the, the pulp, but still I, I'd rather keep, I'd save my glucose intake for something that is really really great i i, I also eat um beans and things um i'm not You're okay with the lectins i'm not sure what about <laughs> about dr gundry's uh <laughs> thing i have to be convinced about that yeah i am I'm, I'm a little bit more cautious now that uh i've read his book um but i've been eating that stuff my whole life I think personal here's the thing that like you say, what what works for someone's microbiome and, and physiology and immune system might not work for another. 